Uh, I'm Doug Robinson. I run this little shop called Fresh Digital Group in New York. We uh, think that mobile is, is definitely where everything is at, per Eric. Everything is mobile. Um, we try to focus on creative and strategy and, and how those two together can make us really cool programs, uh, whether that's on the development side, media, uh, social, etc. Uh, to give you some examples, we've built some cool products, ESPN, uh, we built out their second screen platform, run it with their events. Uh, we'll help the NBA do social wall kind of executions down in Brazil. We'll work with an XAD or Mobile Fuse or Toys R Us to kind of and a Horizon Media to help them on their creative. Uh, and then we'll help other people do media. So we really think that brands, publishers, agencies, uh, they need someone like us to help them. So what is it about experiential and events and, and different things, right? Because, it, I mean, the reality is everything is moving towards experiential events, right? How many events did you, do you guys go to that aren't business related? You know, this past weekend in New York, there was this almost competition between Governor's Ball and, and Belmont Stakes and, and who was at which event and what was going on. And so, you know, the physical event is really just the first step. Um, and, and obviously, we want you to think that technology kind of what Eric was saying is, isn't just you know, the solution, it's just a part of how we get to attribution. Um, at the end of the day, that's, that's really what, what matters. Um, obviously, the demographics tell a pretty good story. We're kind of at one of those really rare points where uh, I think we have enough data to really use it and see that it's effective depending on what our vertical is, what we're trying to do, et cetera. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty basic that we're all doing stuff at events. Uh, you know, perfect example. Uh, you know, obviously everyone's taking their phones, obviously taking pictures, social, etc. You know, as I said, I was going to come here on Saturday. Instead, I went to the Belmont Stakes, and I got a pretty good experience. Not one of my best photos, but hey, it's kind of cool. Um, so how do we provide more at events, right? We're all at events. We're looking for just better things to happen, right? How many times have you gone to like that booth and you know, the, the people are handing out gum and it's just not, it's just really nothing. So often what I'm seeing at most of the events I'm attending are drones. I'm constantly seeing a drone. I was just at, again, I'm sitting at Belmont Stakes, Google Dolls are performing, poof, there's a drone hanging out. 10,000 people go crazy, they're all excited about it, awesome, no big deal. So how do we take what we think about drones and take it to the next level, right? Obviously, we have like, you know, a Martha Stewart who's using it to, you know, look at her property and look at the crops. Um, the farmers are using it. You know, the U.S. is kind of behind relative to the rest of the world uh, when we think about drones. So we think that it really just comes down to connecting to people in a really personalized way. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's just a vehicle, right? So if we can take this mainstream format and, and really kind of you know, collect more first party data, isn't that what we all want as marketers, as brands? At the end of the day, that's what it's about. How do you own your own first party data? So there are different solutions, right? There are swarms, there are, you know, we've come up with the droney. So basically you can literally get a selfie from a drone sponsored by Colgate or you know, Listerine, things like that. Um, you know, I go to parties in Montauk and 
we have a yearly party and you know we've been playing with the drone every year now and now people are dancing with the drones and they're like flying off the they're hovering over the the pool and flying up and it's just it's just awesome and then we all get that content later right because we're creating real-time content to exchange in our social planets and then let's talk about beacons we've all been kind of chasing beacons for a couple of years now right we're studying them we're trying to figure out how to scale them we're connecting them to apps we're thinking about why they're relevant um, you know, I've even installed beacons at our office because we have an app, and so then I can start tracking uh, when people show up and when they leave, and how do I, how do I help them be a little more efficient? You know, because I can see if, if you're only working seven and a half hours, maybe that extra half an hour is like three hours of additional productivity. So I mean, like, I mean, and that's just you know, we're really just at the beginning, right? Like, you know, when do beacons help you at school and kind of determine? Uh, you know, attendance. How do you, when you come into your apartment building, it's the new way of picking up your packages. I mean, I think we've barely scratched the surface, but we know, you know, that definitely beacons need scale, right? So how, how do we scale? How do we scale? How do we take an event that has, you know, 50 people or 500 people or whatever it is, and then use that data um, outside of just a retail environment, but at the next level? So how do you make it scalable content? We think if you combine beacons and drones, you have a pretty good chance. Um, how do you draw data from every single interaction? That's something that you can do with a beacon and drone. Generally in a beacon, right, you're, it's, it's affixed to some object and you walk through the door. Well, the great thing at an event with a drone, you can kind of connect. I could literally connect to all of you that had the Mobilenomics app in less than 45 seconds. That's a lot different than waiting for each of you to enter the building. So let's look at that at scale, right? Let's look at that at Coachella. Let's look at that at, uh, uh, you know, the movement was just in Detroit, you know, where I'm tons and tons of auto manufacturers. Let's look at Bonnaroo, which we just had. So just kind of food for thought. Um, it, you know, here's an example. Uh, an artist came to us and, and wanted something for their concert and their tour. They're releasing an album and all that. And, you know, we kind of thought, and they're like, well, yeah, you know, we're doing some drone stuff. And, and we thought it'd be really cool that if we could literally, you know, put our beacons on our drones and then push, the push notification would be a track, right? Well, it could be cooler than you're at a show and you know that he's about to play this album and everything's going cool and then you get the track on your phone. So that's kind of like a, you know, artist branded experience. We think that's pretty effective. Uh, we were talking to, to Visa to do some things. What does every credit card company care about? Data. How do we capture more data? How do we leverage those dollars that we're spending at events? Right? As I said, we can only do the booth thing so much. We can only do the access to backstage so much more. We have to come up with better ideas that create real time and kind of rich engagement activities. Again, events, digital, sucks. It's gotta get better. We have to figure out a solution. We have location, we have phones, we have these great tools, we have lots of stuff, but none of us have really thought about putting it together and taking it to the next level. So let's talk about personalizing some of that data, right? We all wanna capture that data. Again, it goes a little bit back to the beginning of, you know, we have the technology, but how do we get attribution? And, you know, how do we, how do we change the current environment of how we're spending money at events because people are there and they're not really getting anything, anything from us on a digital execution standpoint. Anatomy of campaign. It's pretty much like every other campaign you run, right? Idea, come up with a strategy, develop something, test it, run it, learn something. That's like every other thing we do. Doesn't matter if it's media, doesn't matter if it's development, it really doesn't matter what it is. Uh, it's pretty much the same kind of idea. And ROI. We all know at the end of the day, it breaks down to ROI. How do we get better ROI based on the money that we're spending for X client or X brand, et cetera? How do we drive this to a different level? You know, I think we all feel, those of us that are in the mobile space, that this is kind of a, a really good year for kind of helping us understand mobile ROI better. Um, you know, obviously we figured out location. We figured out a lot of different things, so we're a lot closer to really having that straight line of mobile ROI that we can kind of push out uh, to our clients. So that's the good news. Um, and then in practice, 
you know, obviously mobile can do this. I mean, we think that if you can set up custom events, you can really have an opportunity to drive not only massive real-time content sharing, amazing social engagement, great data that you can track back, and just an enhanced experience. So what would the futurists think, right? What's gonna happen next? Well, we thought, as futurists ourselves, that we would just get a patent so that we could own the push notification because we all know that push notifications aren't nearly as creative as they should be, right? They've been great to kind of leverage apps and leverage content and all these things, but no one's really taken it to the next level. So we thought if we could own that push experience from a creative perspective, a la Mr. Weisberg, they would have a really nice opportunity to come up with some really engaging programs and track them uh, back to brand engagement at events. Apple Watch, we all know today that at WWDC, it's probably gonna be uh, you know, announced that now we're gonna have native development. So as opposed to it really clicking back to the phone, you're gonna be able to really start using some of the features uh, directly connected to the watch. And we think that's an amazing opportunity. Why am I not at an event and instead of picking up my phone, I get push notification to my watch, I'm off to backstage, I'm off to whatever brand it is. That's something that we definitely are working on and, and we think is gonna be pretty cool. Um, and then Solo Shot. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but it's kind of like a, a Sony um, developed product to where you wear a device and it kind of follows you wherever you go. So I'm skiing and it literally can track me from a camera as I'm skiing. So then let's think about Solo Shot and a drone. How cool would that be? Because then now we're creating, we could actually customize these selfies specific to people that were engaged with either the app, the brand, et cetera, at the event. And then Snapchat. How cool would it be to start doing Snapchat from drones? You guys want to, I mean, we all know, we all know what's happening with, I mean, I hope we all know what's happening with Snapchat. It's growing faster than everything. Um, so what should you take away from these 10 minutes of stuff? Um, why is this gonna work? Because the only unifying thread is the consumer in brand architecture. We have to do better at connecting to different consumers in different ways that are creative and ideally experiential driven. Very, very simple. Um, again, experiences, experiences, experiences. You know, I, 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 can't, I can't stress enough that if, you know, every time I have a meeting, someone's like, some brand is saying to us, we, we can't connect to millennials, we don't understand them, blah, blah, blah. Guess what, they're spending all their money at events. Period, it's that simple. And the personal narrative. We're all telling our own personal narrative. I mean, I, I Instagrammed a photo from my balcony because the view from my room here is amazing. That's my personal narrative of my experience here. That is so critical to all of us, especially millennials. Me styling. Um, and then consumer advocacy. I mean, we all really, really are, are looking for things that our friends tell us, right? We have so much information that we're dealing with every day. The reality is I can't figure out a lot of stuff. There's certain things that I can't think about what I want to buy in this category or that category or that vertical. So we're relying on our friends. It's, it's far beyond the social sharing of it. It's more about how does our network enable us to spend money on brands and products. So, uh, entertainment, engage your users, find something that's cool. Beacons are pretty good, we're in the early stages. Uh, we know that you know, a mobile strategy requires an ecosystem approach. We think that combining beacons, drones, and really creative push is something unique and that none of us are really thinking about. Um, and as I've said a couple times, technology is not a solution, it's just an attribute. You know, how do we keep our clients, brands, on top of different things? How do we help them understand what the next level is? Where is the next innovation? Is it on the Apple Watch? Is it Snapchat? Is it drones and beacons? You know, we have to spend time exploring and, and really, really trying to see what could work across the board. Um, and we all know, look, mobile isn't easy. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. It's not easy. You gotta get creative, you gotta seek engagement, you gotta do different things to get different solutions because it's moving faster than any other business in the world. 
nothing is moving faster than mobile and how people are interacting with their devices and how the devices are, are just doing more for them and becoming their personal remote control to the planet. That's it. Have a good day, guys.